I loved writing. I loved art, and I loved the the way it, it made me feel, and the way I could seem to put some words together. And you know, so I go to college for it, and uh, I'm excited, and I'm young. Around the time about 23 after I graduate, I kind of start feeling lost, and I find this element in, in drugs and alcohol, and I don't feel so lost anymore. I I don't feel so insecure. I don't even mind that I'm not writing anymore, not doing anything with film. I don't mind that that I'm kind of just existing. And what I wouldn't know at that time, what I couldn't see, is that this great dichotomy was forming inside me. You know, I'm get I'm putting this element in drugs and alcohol, and but I have this love for my mother, and it's slowly deteriorating, and it would take me in pieces. I just couldn't see it at the time. And by the time my father died at 26, I overdosed for the first time at his uh, graveside. Time keeps marching on as it does, and I keep getting arrested. Now back here, I had all this love. I wanted to write, I wanted to create art, I wanted to make films, but then you just add seven years to the deal, and I'm not the same human being anymore, and I'm angry. I'm angry with my father passing away. I'm angry at myself, I hate myself, but I'm not gonna put the drugs down. And it goes like that for a very long time. You know, I have kids and I don't raise them. And I started abusing myself through drugs and alcohol and, and I'm losing myself each year. And then my baby brother passes away and I'm done, like I'm done. From that point to the next three years, my addiction, it's a blur and there is no me left. And it goes like that for a long time until the last three years of my life I'm, and my addiction, I'm walking around downtown Tulsa, I got a beard, I don't know what year it is. And my brother comes up to me on the streets and he said, mom died overnight. And I keep, keep going for a couple more weeks and an old high school friend, someone that cared for me long ago, goes down downtown Admiral in this motel I'm at and I don't know what's going on. And she said, you were beautiful in another life. You, you, you had hopes and dreams. She said, why don't you get help? And I don't know why I said, okay, I don't. And next thing I know, I'm in a detox. Next thing I know, I'm at 12 and 12 in front of Marty V who's in this congregation and he talks about hurting. And I say, I recognize that pain. And a few days later, I'm in an auditorium. They have a guest speaker and his name's Nathan Gormley. And I see him up there and he's telling this testimony, what he's gone through and, and he's so kind. And I lean over to a guy to my right who actually overdosed a month after treatment. I went to his funeral and I said, I wanna be around this guy. Maybe if I could get around this guy, things could be different for me. I want to be around Nathan, and I know one thing. The one thing that I could recognize after only even 30 days of sobriety is if I ever want to be around Nathan, if I ever want to have a friend like that, I got to stay clean. And that kindness that I saw up there, that goodness in him, that light, for an old broken person like myself, it stayed with me. And it's going to sound odd, but I start writing Nathan every day, poems. It was garbage at first, you know, I hadn't done it in so long. And Nathan's writing kind things back, you know, what he must have thought, you know, the guy 35 days sober writing poems to him. But he said kind things, and that, that kindness and Kayla's belief that I could do this, though the evidence suggested otherwise, painting on these Walmart canvases with 50 cent paint, it's garbage, but I'm noticing something. Other people's kindness is starting to make me remember this thing that's way back here this thing that I used to be. And next thing I know, it's 60 days I'm sober, then 90 days. And next thing I know, I moved to Broken Arrow so I'd be closer to Nathan. And then we became friends and he, I was five months sober, he pulls me to the side and he said, I got an idea, why don't you do this every single day? Why don't you write every single day? And maybe you should paint too every single day and see what comes of it. And next thing I know, I'm writing every single day. I'm writing when when I hurt, I'm writing when I'm happy, I'm painting on Christmas, I'm writing when I feel alone, I'm writing, and the next thing I know, I'm praying. And next thing I know, these words are making me forgive myself in a way, and I'm going to meetings and other people's kindness, it's infectious and it makes me want to be kind. And it makes me want to, to love other people and to give love and be loved and have forgiveness for myself. And then I'm nine months sober, and I've never been nine months sober. And I noticed that I don't hurt so bad. So I keep painting. And people's kindness saved my life. And that's all I am. Just a guy that, that lost his way so bad and thought it would always be that way. And it was other people's love that taught me how to love myself, taught me how to forgive myself. 
Without question, I don't make it with other people, without their kindness and their love. How awesome is that? What an awesome story. I want to thank Dustin for sharing his story. Um, man, Dustin, he says he paints, right? Like he didn't sell it enough. He's an amazing artist, um, just so you know. He made me a painting. I've always wanted him to make me a painting, but I didn't want to ask. I didn't want to be that guy. Um, and he made me one actually uh, last week, and he started talking to me about his story. And I'm like, we, we, we got to get this story down, because I had no idea the extent of his story. And as I was hanging out with Nate Friday, Nate was like, oh, yeah, Dustin was like one of the homeless people you would see downtown that would be talking to a tree because he thought that tree was his brother. Like, he was gone. And it is amazing to see what the power of God can do, right? Like it is just absolutely incredible. I mean, 75-year-old lady gets baptized for the first time today. We got a guy talking about his life being changed, man. And here's what it shows me. There's nothing God can't do, right? And we say that and we declare it and we sing it. But, man, you're seeing it on display today. I could literally just say, everybody, bow your heads, close your eyes, and we had a great Sunday. But I'm not going to do that. You're not so lucky today. But um, today, I wanna, <laughs> today I want to talk to you about kindness. I want to talk to you about kindness. We're in a series called With Good. And last week we talked about the, the whole part where Paul is talking about don't be overcome with evil, but overcome or conquer evil with good. And, and what does that mean to us? And Dustin put that out for us so well today. What, what changed him? It was the power of Jesus Christ, but it was other people's kindness. It was their willing to just be kind, to say kind things, and to have kind actions. And hear me, if we're going to overcome this world, man, if we're not going to be overcome by evil, but if we're going to overcome evil with good, you and I are called to live a life of kindness. So today I want to talk to you about, a, about reboots and nicknames. Reboots and nicknames. Um, can we just agree 2020 and 2021 were just garbage years, right? Like it was just, it was, it was just confusing. Um, it's like I went all through, pu pu went through puberty again, right? I was just like, what is happening to my body? What's happening right now? My emotions are everywhere. Everybody's acting weird. Everybody's changing. The rules are changing. And, and, and it was just a really awkward two years that I feel like we're just coming out of, honestly. And, and there was two things that really stopped kindness. And the first one was COVID, and the second one was an election. All right? Let's just be honest. And when I say COVID and when I say elections, all throughout this building and those of us watching online, there's a lot of emotions to that. All of us have feelings. All, all of us still have emotions about those two things. Let's hit COVID first. When, when COVID hit, there were lockdowns. We were freaked out, right? I remember running with one of my buddies, and he's like, we got to stay six feet apart. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, whatever, you know. And he's like, I mean, I, it was so weird, like especially in the beginning because we didn't know what we were dealing with. And he's like, I'm going to stay over here, and I'll do my push-ups over here. Gyms were closed. Schools were closed. Everything was closed. You had to wear masks, right? Toilet paper shortages were like everywhere. Um, you guys remember this? How many of you have gotten bidet since then? Don't answer that. Um, but... Um, <laughs> There was a toilet paper shortage, and, and then, hopefully you guys remember this, there were, when you went grocery shopping, arrows on the ground. Do you guys remember this? Right. Here's the problem with this. So I'm going grocery store shopping, required to wear a mask. I got my mask on. Um, I wouldn't say I have a big nose. I would just say I don't have a small one. And so when I wear a mask, the mask is like this. It comes out this far because of my nose. And I go through research and I'm going grocery shopping and like, I'm just going, I don't see any arrows because they're down, they're not up here, <laughs> they're down here. And I just start walking and like, I'm just grabbing stuff and, 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 and people started looking at me like I'm a mass murderer, right? And people are gasping, people are getting mad. Like there was one older gentleman that was like, you're just trying to kill people. And I'm like, I'm just trying to get Campbell's Chunky Soup, right? Like, I'm not, what are you talking about, old man? I almost got in another fight with old man, right? Like, I'm like, 
Like, <laughs> I'm just trying. I, and I didn't, know, I didn't even know there were arrows until the second time I went grocery shopping with Casey. And I just start shopping. And she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm shopping. And she's like, there's arrows on the ground. And I had to go, oh, there's arrows. <laughs> so every time before, I'd have to, like, look down and be like, okay. And you know if there was something on the edge, you went the wrong way. Just tell the truth, right? But here's the deal. COVID made us, like, Anxiety, right? There was fear. There's paranoia. We're scared. And we, somewhere along the line, we stopped being kind. We stopped smiling at strangers because you can't see it anyways. <laughs> right? We stopped talking to strangers. We definitely stopped high-fiving and hugging and shaking hands. And in the process, it's not that we just lost the high-five. It's not that we just lost the handshake. It's not that we just lost the ability to hug, we lost the willingness to be kind. And then you throw in an election. An election that there's still a lot of feelings in this place about, all right? A lot of emotions about it. Oh, it was rigged. How could it be rigged? You know, you're ridiculous. No, you're ridiculous. Each side's still angry about it, the way it went down. All right, I mean, let's be honest. Each side is still angry well, not my president. Like, we're acting the same way that the people that acted when Trump was, well, I would never act that way. And you're saying, well, now you're just, we're doing that. And in the process of it all, we're angry. We're, we're just divided as a country, as people. Families have, I know families that have been torn apart over this past election. And through it all, what has happened is we have stopped being who God has called us to be. And we stopped operating out of kindness. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 21, it says this, don't be overcome. We talked about this last week, that overcome means conquered. Don't be conquered by evil. I gotta tell you, there is something inside of me that just rises up when I read this. I'm not gonna be whipped by evil. I'm not gonna get conquered by it. I'm not gonna get overwhelmed by it. But our charge is this, but overcome, conquer evil with good. Not by staying away from doing bad, right? That's not what Paul is saying. He's not saying don't, avo don't av just avoid sin and you're doing okay. He says, no, 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 it's way bigger than that. Overcome evil by doing good. And you and I are called to do good with kindness, so today I want to talk to us about the topic of kindness. And I want us to understand the first thing is this. When we fail to be kind, we succeed at being something else. When we fail to be kind, we succeed at being something else. All right, the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this... You will live many years and your life will be satisfying. I don't know one person that doesn't want to live their life in a satisfying way. And Solomon's saying this, if you do this, you'll come to the end of your life and you'll be satisfied with the way you lived it. So he says this, never let loyalty and kindness leave you. He could have put a lot of things in there. But he said, never let loyalty and kindness leave leave you, tie them around your neck as a reminder, write them deep within your heart, then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. From, from everybody I know, they want the results of this verse, but many times we don't do what it takes to yield the results of this verse. And somewhere along this past year, kindness left our life. Kindness is something that is happening sporadically in our lives instead of consistently in our lives, right? And, and what I would tell you is this, is that when kindness leaves, something always takes its place. We have a favorite seat at our house. Um, I have a favorite seat in my house. It is the right side of my couch because there is an end table there. You can put your drinks there. You got the remotes there. You got the armrest. It's on the couch. It's comfortable. And anytime I get up, somebody takes that spot, right? Like, I'm just like, get out of my seat. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't ask for a lot. Get out of my seat. If I get up, my dog even gets into that seat. Like, he just... <laughs> 
puts and puts his head on the head rest, on the armrest and just like, hey, you know what I'm like, really you? You're supposed to be my best buddy, right? Like, and you're taking my own seat. And, and here's what I know is that anytime I get up and I leave, something takes my place. And can I tell you, when it comes to kindness, when it comes to us operating in kindness, when we fail to be kind, we succeed at being something else. And most of the time, the thing that we succeed at being is harsh, is mean, is angry, is fearful, is being an anxious person, a worrying person. And we've stopped being this person that just goes through life being kind. And I think one of the reasons is because in the process of talking about kindness, we don't really understand kindness. And here's one myth I want to demythify today for you and I when it comes to kindness. I can disagree with you and still be kind to you. Hear me, we, we came through an election, right? Some of you voted for Joe Biden, some of you voted for Trump. I can't believe you said both of those names in the church, right? Like, that's who was up for the election, right? Biden bus, Trump train. And your guy didn't get elected, can I tell you, you can still get along with the person that voted for the candidate you didn't vote for. I can still, I cannot agree with you, but still be kind to you. We have made the mistake that our culture thinks just, if I I disagree with you or I don't approve of your life and the choices you are making, or let's hit this, and this is a whole nother message we'll get into sometime. I I can disagree with your lifestyle, but I can still be kind to you. I can still love you. Love and kindness does not mean acceptance. Right? It doesn't mean approval, and, and we've got to understand, just because I, I, I don't agree with you and just because I don't approve of you doesn't mean that I'm not being kind to you. Can I, I'm going to make a really just honest, have an honest, vulnerable moment here for you, and this is going to make some of you really, really mad. In fact, it's probably going to make half of you mad. I, I've tried to play it politically correct. I've, I, it happens about at least once, twice a year. I'm just going to come out with it and tell you the way I really feel. I cannot stand OSU football. Just Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I know. I know. Right? I, I, I am a massive OU fan. Well, did you go to college there? No, I didn't. OU doesn't have the best Bible course. I don't know if you know that. Um, probably shouldn't be preaching if that's where I went for my Bible degree, right? But, but I'm just going to let you know, my second favorite team that plays college football is whoever is playing OSU that day. Just telling you. Now, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> right? And I've, I've been trying. I, I, Cody Myers, who's helping us with baptism. Cody, huge OSU fan. Can I tell you? Me and Cody are still great friends, even though I don't like OSU, and he doesn't like, he, he feels about OU like I do OSU, right? It's okay, right? Like, it's, it's okay. And just because we don't agree doesn't mean that we can't be buddies and we can't be kind, right? We got to understand this is true for every aspect of life, right? Just because I don't agree, I got I to move. And, and here's the other part. Just because they don't agree with you doesn't mean that they're not being kind to you. The second thing is this. Right? Being kind isn't being weak. Being kind is doing good. Being kind isn't a weak thing. Being kind is a good thing. In fact, Jesus gives us a roadmap for how to live this out. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, he says, always treat others as you would like them to treat you. Right? This is, this is a basic principle when it comes to following Christ. Always treat, not when you feel like it, not when it's easy, not when people are looking, not when it's going to give you a good reputation. He simply says this, always treat others, even when they're treating you wrong, even when they're not being kind, always treat others as you would like them to treat you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23 says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, the very two first attribute, descriptor words of love is this. Love is patient and kind. 
find it interesting that patience and kindness are traveling companions. And here's why I believe they are traveling companions. It's because I've never met somebody who has lost their patience, who has become an impatient person, remain a kind person. You can't be an impatient person and a kind person. I've seen a lot of, when you lose your patience, you lose your willingness to be kind, right? And this is why this is such a big deal. Love is, it's patient and patient leads to kindness, leads to you being willing to be kind. And kindness is what you and I are called to be. So kindness means this, it comes from a Greek word called krestos, which means goodness, right? That's what kindness, kindness means goodness. The opposite is of this is evil and wickedness. So here's what I want us to understand today. Kindness isn't neutral. It is goodness in motion. That, that's what kindness is, is that it's not neutral, but it is goodness in motion. It is goodness being active in our life, in our words, in our activities, through our actions, through the way we are treating other people. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8 through 15. This is going to be our text for next week as well, okay? It says this, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Can I tell you, Foundation Church, now is the time to make a change. This, this, like when you have a problem with your electronics, you can try to close the app out, but eventually what may need to happen is you need to unplug it or turn it off so that it can reboot, right? I saw a meme that said, did anybody try unplugging 2021 and then plugging it back in, right, to see if it, if it worked? And my hope is this. I can't reboot the whole world, but we had over 1,200 people here last week, right, as a church, Foundation Church. That's awesome. And, and what, what would happen if 1,000 of us decided that we would reboot when it comes to kindness, that we would re and let the Holy Spirit reboot our actions and our words. And today is the day, now is the time for you and I to listen to Colossians chapter 3. Now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Paul is saying this, it doesn't matter the background you came from. It doesn't matter how you are raised. It doesn't matter what your religion was. It doesn't matter your traditions. All that matters is Jesus Christ and that you've accepted him. And if that has happened, there's a change that needs to happen in you and I. Now, verse 12, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must close yourself, clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, there it is again, humility, gentleness, and patience. We're going to talk about this part next week. Make allowance for each other's faults. We don't do that. And forgive anyone who offends you. We don't do that. <laughs> Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. We're going to talk about that verse next week. But above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and be thankful. When it comes to kindness, when it comes to this text, Paul starts with the words that we are saying. He says, get rid of all your, your, your angry words, all your bitterness, your lies, your rumors, your, your gossip, your malicious behavior. Like, stop, stop saying all the wrong things. And, and kindness starts with the words that we speak. And here's what I want us to know is kind words cost nothing but mean everything. Kind, they, you know what? Kind words cost you nothing. They, you don't have to pay for them. You don't, have, you don't have to, it doesn't bankrupt you all of a sudden. You don't have to dip in your retirement like, ooh, this is a big kind word. I really got to take a loan out on this one, right? No, kind words don't cost you one thing, but they mean everything to the person you're speaking it to. Man, it makes an impact to the person you're speaking it to. Proverbs 16, verse 24. Kind words are like honey, 
sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Some of you right now are going, well, I don't like honey, so maybe I don't want to say it. Okay, let's switch this. Kind words are like sugar, right? Sweet to the soul and not, well, it's not healthy for the body, so that doesn't work. So Proverbs 18, verse 20 through 21, wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. There's that word again. The tongue can bring death or life, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Here's what I've come to understand is that mean and harsh words leave marks. But kindness, it gives life. Right? It does. Mean and harsh words, man, it leaves marks. It does damage. Some of us are like, well, I've been, I've been saying kind things for two, two weeks in my marriage. I don't see any, some people are really this way. I even gave her a nickname that she likes. But you've been saying the wrong thing for three years. Can I tell you, it takes a little while. Words, words, kind words, man, it means everything. But mean, harsh words makes an impact, right? And if you are dealing with bad things in your relationships because you've been speaking the bad things, you're reaping what you have sowed. Right? Your words have a positive or negative effect. There is no neutral to it. How do we come overcome evil? We overcome evil by doing good. Kindness is goodness in motion, right? So when we're speaking words, it's kindness, it's goodness in motion. Here, most of us growing up, we got a, we got a nickname, right? You got a nickname growing up in elementary school. I'm going to go to the middle section here today. I need somebody to give me the first nickname you were ever called. Falcor. Falcor, okay. Falcor. I have no idea what that means, and I'm okay with that. But here's what I know about Daniel. Daniel is over 30 years old. Okay. Whew. Okay. Um, over 30 years old, and he still remembers the first nickname he was ever called. Can I tell you, I can almost guarantee you this. All of us here probably remember the first negative nickname we were ever called. Mine was Daddy Long Legs. I mean, I think they look pretty good, but I was about this tall when I was in fifth grade. And I weighed 140 pounds. So now you see why the name Daddy Long Legs, right? I can tell you other nicknames. I was called Skeletor in my eighth grade football team because I look like it's a pile of bones. But I was a mean sucker, right? Like, I, I was called, I remember my eighth grade year in one class, I was called dummy by every person in that class. My teacher called me dummy because I asked a dumb question one time. I am 45 years old. I'm a man. I'm 40, right? Like I'm 45 years old. And I still remember the harsh words that were spoken to me. And here's what I can tell you. Just as I remember the harsh things, I remember the kind things. Because just as harsh brings death, man, kind words bring life. Man, they bring encouragement. They speak things into a person's life that they never thought about doing. When, when Nate starts talking to Dustin about, you know what you need to do? You need to keep writing me poems, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, I like that. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy, right? But he's like, you need to keep writing. You need to keep painting. Man, it may not be what you want it to be, Dustin, but keep at it. It it triggered something in Dustin. It lit something into Dustin's life that he is now doing for a profession. Can I tell you, kind words make an impact. And for too long, the church has been a place where there's been negative words and hurtful words and divisive words and rumors of words and gossip words that are spreading all throughout the place. And we gotta switch the script, right? We gotta flip the script on this. And hear me, parents and spouses and teenagers, Man, your kids, your spouse needs to hear kind words because they're being told everything they aren't by this world, right? And your job as a parent is to speak life into them. 
Your job as a spouse is to speak life into them. And we as a church, this is called to be a place where people can come that are lost, that are a mess, and they can become found, and they can have a message come out of their life because growing equals changing. So hear me. We will not be a church of gossip, but a church of praise. We will not be a church of criticism, but of encouragement. We will not be a church of rumors, but of kindness. We will not be a church of harshness, but of love. We will be not a church that tells lies, but we speak truth in love. Not a church of despair, but hope, and not a divisive church, but a church that is unified. Can I tell you, Foundation Church, that's who we've got to become. That's how we defeat evil. You defeat evil by having kindness, goodness in motion. I love what Mark Twain said. He said this, kindness is a language with the, which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. So good. Kindness doesn't even need it to be announced. Everybody understands it and sees it when it's real. The last thing is this. Kindness brings change over time. Kindness brings change over time. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. See that no one pays back evil for evil. Ooh, that's hard. Like, let's really talk about the truth of that. That's hard. Make sure you don't pay back evil for evil, insult for insult. But always, everybody say always. Always try to do good to each other, because Paul's talking to the church, so make sure that you're doing good to each other, and he doesn't leave it like, okay, it's just us that we have to do good to, and to everyone else. Ah, to people who don't vote like you. Do good to them. Be kind to them. To people who stand against everything you stand for. Uh, do good to them. But I don't want to. I know. Can I tell you, kindness isn't based on your emotions. It's based on my obedience. And, then, and are you being obedient to treat others, as Jesus said, as you want them to treat you? Man. Be kind to them. Because here's the deal. Kindness, over time, changes people. You want to know what changed Dustin? <coughs> oh, yes, it was the power of Jesus Christ. But it was also kind words and kind actions. He kept talking about it. Man, just, they were just so kind. They were just so kind. Who do you need to be kind to today? Right? Who do you need to? And, and you got to be purposeful about it. Who do you purposefully need to be kind to? Who's God put in your path that you can't stand that you need to be kind to? Who's the person at that little league field? <laughs> that you need to be kind to? Because I remember, can I tell you, I... I I can remember when people have been mean to me, but man, when people have been extremely kind to me, phew, blew me out of the water. All right? And if we're going to change the world, we don't do it by complaining about it. We don't do it about griping. Well, I hope somebody does something. We're called to be that something, and we're called to be that someone. And here's what I would tell you, simply this, is that if you will be kind, over time, kind actions change you. Right? Kind actions change you over time. The secret of it is this. The person that's really benefited from kindness, that really benefits from kind words and kind actions, it's you. It's me. The person that results in living this satisfying, honorable life by having kindness involved, it, it's, it's me. It's you by being kind. In fact, it says this in Proverbs eleven seventeen. Your kindness will reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. It will destroy relationships. It will destroy opportunities. But if you choose to be kind, it doesn't reward them so much as, as Solomon is saying this. Your kindness rewards 
you. And it says this in Proverbs 21, 21, whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life. Some of you, you're looking for the meaning of life and you're looking for really having life. As Jesus saying, I came that you may have life and have it to the full, have a rich and satisfying life, right? And all throughout the scriptures, if that's gonna be what our life is, if our life is gonna be, if we're gonna find life and it's gonna be satisfying, it's when our life is full of kindness, which is goodness in motion. Your life, whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness and honor. So let me leave you with this today. Just a charge, I wanna give you Foundation Church. People are illogical, unreasonable, and self-centered. Love them anyways. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Do good anyways. If you are successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyways. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyways. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyways. The biggest men and women with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest men and women with the smallest minds. Think big anyways. People favor underdogs but follow only top dogs. Fight for a few Dustin Baileys, a few underdogs anyways, right? What you spend your life building may be destroyed overnight. Build it anyways. People who really need help may attack you if you do help them. Man, have the kindness which is goodness in motion and help them anyways. Give the world your best and you may have your teeth kicked in. Give the world the best you have anyways. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Kindness is good in motion. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Man, I love you. I thank you. And I am so excited about this series and this message because you have given us a mandate, a command of who and what kind of follower we're supposed to be. And Lord, I pray that as, as we're, we're here, Lord, this isn't so much something we need to pray about as it's something we need to be obedient about. Lord, I pray that we would usher kindness back into our world. That Lord, in, in the Tulsa metro area, that there would be a wave of kindness that hits our world, our family, our friends, because the moment we get out of here, something's going to try our patience. The moment we walk out of here, Satan's waiting for us. And Lord, I pray that we would be determined, tenacious, and resolved to be kind anyways. Lord, when we're on our last nerve, that we would be kind anyways. When we're frustrated beyond degrees, Lord, that we would be kind Anyways, when we're angry, when we're upset, when things aren't going our way, when we're tired, when our spouse says the wrong thing, when our kids do something that makes us mad, when we go to our business and somebody's been talking about us, Lord, that we wouldn't try to keep getting even. Lord, if we're still busy trying to get even, kindness left our life a long time ago. But Lord, we would choose to overcome the evil and the wickedness and all that's going bad by choosing to be kind, that we would choose to live a life of goodness that is in motion. Because that makes a difference. That changes lives. And Lord, in the process of all these other people's lives being changed, we're the one that finally is changed and we come to a place that our life is truly satisfying. That this is the life we've been looking for all along. And so Lord, I pray today that you would speak to us that we wouldn't be overcome by all the evil all the wickedness, but we would overcome evil with goodness and kindness. It's in Jesus' name I pray with heads bowed and eyes closed today if you're here. You say, Justin, I'm here and, and I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. We want to give you a chance to change that. Today, if you're here and you say, Justin, where I'm at, it's just not where I should be. 
And I need to recommit my life to him. Man, I, I need to get things right because somewhere along the way, I just, I just drifted. I just drifted away and I know there's a change that needs to happen in my life. You may be here today or you're watching at home online and when I count to three, all I want you to do is raise your hand and we're gonna lead you in a prayer that will change your life because we believe this to our core. God sees a hand and he changes the heart. And today, if that's you, when I get to three, I'm asking for two seconds of crazy courage for you to raise your hand and make the best decision you could ever make. One, two, three. Is there anyone here today? You say, Justin, that's me. Man, you're gonna have to raise it high, yeah. Yeah, is there anyone else who say, Justin, that's me today? There's a change that needs to be made because where I'm at isn't where I should be. Yeah, is there anyone else who just say, Justin, that's me today? And you just lift your hand with these other people and these other individuals. You just say, that is me and that's where I'm at in this place. Yeah, I see you. Man, if you raise your hand in this place or you're watching online and that's you, I'm gonna ask you to repeat this prayer after me and mean it from your heart. Jesus, I come before you today and I confess that I've sinned and that I've messed up, but I ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, I turn away from the life that I was living, I repent of it, and I turn to you, and I grab hold of the life you have for me. I confess you, Jesus Christ, to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm gonna live for you the rest of my days. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen.